You know you get them dry lips. You see me up here doing, I'm, I mean, my lips are dry. But this morning, what I want to talk to you about is um, because I think that, um, here, we can tilt that back just a little bit. Okay, it's good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> we, I want to talk this morning about, you know, about leadership in the church and about pastors, but exposing those who preach false doctrine and stuff, because it is important that we know the truth and that we hear the truth. You know, the Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So if the truth is going to be what makes me free, then I need to know the word of God. I need to know what it looks like. I need to know what it sounds like. And I need to know what it feels like in regard to being confirmed by the Holy Spirit. So I was looking at uh, uh, something about, uh, about T.D. Jakes the other day. And, um, and by him and by as well as um, Joel Osteen. And T.D. Jakes says that that uh, that he's okay with homosexuality. He also says that, you know, there's more than one way to God. Osteen says the same thing, that there's more than one way. There's only one way to God, but there are many ways to Jesus. See, now that's not true. Jesus says that I am the way, the way. And the way that we understand the way is we look at what he had to say about the way in the word of God. We don't go around here looking for opinions and this kind of stuff as to what that way truly is. And the only people that are going to get confused about what that way truly is, is people who don't really know the Lord, nor know the word of God. Now, a lot of people will look at these guys and think that, well, you know, because of their name being famous, look, the devil is famous. <laughs> a lot of people know the devil. Mm -hmm. See, real, real famous. But are you going to join yourself to the devil? No. Heck no. Why? Because ain't nothing good about the devil. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you this as well. There's nothing good about false doctrine and false teaching and stuff. That's right. Why do you think the Bereans and Acts would check out everybody that came in and say, hey, we belong to Jesus and we're going to preach the gospel to you all? They didn't just like take the Bibles and hide them up underneath the bed or whatever. Man, they put them, took them suckers out and they put them this close to their face because they wanted to make sure that nobody was going to deceive them. Because, see, they understood even in Jesus' day, what did Jesus say? Be not deceived. Right. See, he said, don't be deceived. And then you see, I mean, so much after that, where the apostles talked about deception. We're going to look at some of those scriptures this morning and stuff. You don't believe somebody just because, and I've said this many times in this church, because they have name recognition. We don't believe somebody because their name is T.D. Jakes or Joel Osteen or whatever. See, if Jesus said you're going to know them by their fruit, it's going to be how they live, what they say, what they do. Right. See, And if a person is teaching you deceptive things, then guess what? He's deceived. Right. You know, Jesus said, look, whomever you serve, that's whom you become the servant of. And then when a person is teaching deception and lies, they are what? Of their father, the yeah. devil. Turn to John 8, 44. John 8, 44. In John 8, in the, in, the, in the 8th chapter of John, and I've taught out a bit before, and I've referenced it quite a bit, quite often rather. Now, in, 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 the, in the book of John, in, the, in chapter 8, there were these people running around here, these Jews who were saying that they knew Jesus. They say that they knew him, that they knew God, God was their father, and so forth. See? And as I say this, I want you to keep in mind what the Bible says. Don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Now, so if you are really, really hearing the word, you're going to be doing what the word says. Amen. Now, what happens when somebody says that they are hearers of the word because of conversations that you have had with them, and then all of a sudden you see that they are not a doer of the word. Mm -hmm. What does that make them? A liar and a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. See? 
Because if you're going to know them by the fruit, Jesus said, look, and I, and I just put it this way. Jesus said, uh, said that if, the, if there is a certain kind of fruit tree, it's going to bear a certain kind of fruit. Right. You got an orange tree, you can count on oranges being, being grown. If you got an apple tree, you can count on the apples coming from that tree. If a person is a child of God, you're going to see the spirit of God, the character of God, and the everything that God says that that person ought to be living and walking in, that's what you're going to see. Amen. See, Because I believe in the word. I'm a child of God. If I'm a child of God, then my example is Jesus. Right. The, the, the apostles are a good example as well, but my perfect example is Jesus. Amen. See? So I'm going to live as he lived and walk like him if I'm truly, you know, born of that tree that Jesus, that springs from Jesus. See? Amen. That manifests the character of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of tree that I am and that I will continue to become as I seek first the kingdom of God. In all of his righteousness. Right. Now, if Jesus tells me as tell me as a pastor to do what? Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Now, we all know what the gospel is, it's the word of God. Right. So if Jesus commands that I preach the gospel, then I need to be preaching only what is in the word of God. See? But that's not what's happening with most preachers. They are not preaching the word of God. <laughs> T.D. Jakes, from what I've heard him say out of his own mouth, he is not a doggone man that represents God. <laughs> and I know I make a whole lot of y'all mad, especially a whole bunch of black people. Right. Because the only reason that they believe and drink in anything he said, because he's black. I ain't never seen nothing like that in my life. Mm. Just because a person is a certain color, you're going to just doggone just drink in everything that they say. Mm. See? And just because people are, oh, yeah, y'all are all special. Your colors are all special or whatever, you know, in, in order. And, and they use that tactic. The devil uses that tactic in so many different areas of life. Right. Politics. Man, he got politics just doggone doing whatever. I mean, he's sitting behind the doggone control down there in hell somewhere. And he got people doing all kinds of things that are the things that will send you to hell. Mm -hmm. See? And he ain't mad about it. He wants you to go to hell. See? He wants you to understand, the, you know, the, the reason you are in hell is because, the devil said, because I'm smarter than you. Mm. You were a fool. Mm. See? He said, you had a man that doggone came and lived on the planet and was tempted in every way just like you were tempted and he gained victory over it all. He said, but... <laughs> He was able to do all of that. He said, but I'm more cunning than him. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to know what I would really want to call you, is what the devil talking to people that follow him. A stupid fool. See, you could have spent eternity with God, but yet you're going to burn in hell with me and be tormented for eternity. Mm -hmm. All because you were able, you were not able to understand, and you didn't want to understand what Jesus was talking about. Because mm -hmm. your life in your eyes was more important to you in terms of what you wanted to do and what God was commanding you to do. All right. See? So he says, he looks at people and he goes, gotcha. See? And all because of a man doing the devil's bidding, lying for him, representing everything of hell and nothing of heaven, and you still got people just doggone, just doggone on their knees, you know, just lapping that doggone water at the bowl like a lap dog. Mm. Why? Because it's more important what you want than what God has commanded you to do. Mm -hmm. When you end up going to hell and spending eternity separated from God forever, there ain't but one person that you can blame, and it's that person that you see when you're looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. That's the person. You can't blame God for That's right. God warned you about deception. God told you that you must live by every word. Mm -hmm. God says, seek first my kingdom. God says in everything that my son did, that's your example. Right. You need to follow after him. See? And so he said, you totally 
chose to ignore that because T.D. Jakes has name recognition. T.D. Jakes is real popular. T.D. Jakes got thousands of people going to his church. T.D. Jakes got books and T.D. Jakes got movies and T.D. Jakes got this. And so does Joel Osteen and stuff. And he said, I didn't tell you to follow them. Mm -hmm. He sold, he said, I told you to follow them who know me, who honor me, who lift up my name and who glorify my name and who preach my word as they are led by the Holy Spirit. Right. Holy Spirit is not gonna 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 uh, uh, use anybody who is willfully out there in the world preaching and teaching stuff that's not of God. Right. He ain't gonna lead you to believe in that kind of person. See, and the thing about those kind of people, uh, T. D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Joyce Mount, all of those people, they all preach this prosperity gospel stuff. Right. Did you ever hear Jesus tell you or give you a get rich quick scheme? Mm -mm. Never. See, there's only one person I can think in, in the Bible that God, you know, deliberately and showed us by his own doing that he made him rich. Yeah, and the thing, and that was, uh, and that was Solomon. And the thing about it, that thing with Solomon was Solomon didn't ask for it. Right. Now, Solomon had more wisdom than anybody that will ever be born on the planet. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of God is what he had. But I will tell you something. You can have everything of God one day and lose it all the next day simply because of something stupid that you might do. Right. See? By rejecting the word of God. By going back to the way that you used to live and the way that you used to think. Allowing your flesh and the lust of your flesh to get control of you and, can, and lead you and guide you to do those things that are of the devil and that are not of God. Right. That'll get you out of heaven quicker than you say, Jack Flack, buddy. Because everything in our lives, in terms of remaining a child of God and me remaining a servant of God, is I got to obey God. Right. See? I must obey God and do everything that he told me to do. See? God never has never ever told me to come up with some kind of scheme to make people rich. You know why? Because he says, I'm the Lord your God. I will supply your need. Right. And people are looking for these real get rich quick schemes and these easy schemes because if you do things the way that God commands you to do them and leads you to do them, the one thing that you're going to have to have above almost anything else, you're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to have faith and you're going to have to sometimes wait 10 minutes, wait an hour, wait a month, wait a year, sometimes wait years before the manifestation of what God promised you as a result of your prayer and faith. Then if you, if it was a prayer of faith and your trust is in the Lord and you believe in what God said, you don't have no problem with that. Right. Because I'm going to tell you, see, this is the thing that gets me about a lot of people. Now, T.D. Jackson and all these guys, they know they ain't telling the truth about these get-rich-quick schemes and all this stuff mm -hmm. and consuming stuff and things on their own lust and all of that. Mm -hmm. See, they know that that stuff is not of God. Right. But you know what they do? They have allowed the devil to deceive them into believing that they are a man of God and you are really ministering to the people of God. Yeah, they're ministering to the people of God, but they're not ministering to the people, the word of God. Right. See, and the thing about the word of God, it stands alone all by itself. It don't need no help. Right. See, it's, not, it's complete in itself because Jesus is the word. And what does the Bible say? We are complete in him. And if we're complete in Jesus, if we obey the word of God, then we're complete in the word of God. Amen. Amen. We don't need no help. See? But yet you got people running around with all these different kinds of schemes and stuff, telling people that, well, you know, you give this amount of money, you're going to be blessed. You know, you give this amount of money, you're going to be blessed. Let me see if that's the right thing working out. If you do this, you're going to be blessed and all of that stuff. See? So, so the thing is, is that if I am to be faithful and obedient, then I got to do what God tells me to do. Right. I can't worry about what other people are trying to get me to do. I don't care who they are. Because I'm going to tell you, if T.D. Jakes and Joel, Joel Osteen don't repent, they're going to hell. Mm -hmm. Because what they're saying to people is, they're more, number one, they're more important than God. And number two, they know more than God. Mm -hmm. Because when a person is telling you that there's a different way, 
other than the one that God has etched in stone that there's only one way to God, that's through Jesus. Right. See? And there ain't no more than one way to Jesus. That's right. The way you get to Jesus, you repent of your sin and you ask him to be Lord and Savior of your life. Amen. See? Then he might be, <clears throat> then you get to you get your way to Jesus. Right. But there ain't no 29 Hail Marys. There ain't no doggone uh, give you a thousand dollars and God's going to do all this and stuff. Shake the preacher's hand, get sprinkled with water, get baptized. That ain't saving nobody. Mm -hmm. See, the thing, I mean, honestly, I, I, I was shocked at the number of scripture that deal with deception. There's a bunch of them in there. But you know what even shocks me more? The fact that people so easily believe a lie and don't have any kind of conviction about it. Right. I'm talking about people call themselves saved. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If a person has no problem lying to you and deceiving you, then what do you think they think about God? Mm -hmm. Huh? Look, man, I can tell them whatever I want to. Forget about that stuff God told me to say and all that. They may not say that out their mouth, but if you're judging them by their fruit, you're going to be looking at what they do. Right. See? And so when somebody tells you that there's another way, there's something else that you can do to be saved or whatever, that tells you, man, they're looking at God going, just thumbing the nose at it. See? Look, there, think about this. When a person does that, you know what they're saying? They say, man, God don't mean no more to them than this piece of paper. Whatever God says ain't that important. See? Because you are going against everything that God said was true and was righteous and was holy because you came up with your own doctrine. Mm. It's what you did. See? And people who do that kind of stuff, they are children of the devil. Because you think about it. What did the devil do or have those who follow him do in scripture? The same thing he did. Following Jesus around through men trying to make his life miserable. Mm -hmm. Doing the same thing to the apostles and to the prophets. Mm -hmm. Same thing, man. And yet, <clears throat> you got people who will not stick strictly to the word of God and just preach that. You know when the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Nothing. You're going to hell. There is nothing profitable in the kingdom of God by becoming a millionaire, becoming a billionaire, becoming a famous person. You know, ain't nothing, no benefit to that in that in regard to your eternal destiny. The only thing that I found beneficial <clears throat> uh, and when I played professional baseball, the only thing that I found beneficial in being a professional ball player was you had more opportunity to reach people with the gospel. You had a more of an opportunity to talk to people with the gospel because people are always going to be wanting your autograph. See? And so that's the opportunity. And see, the thing about it, I don't care what your job is. I don't care if you're a doggone custodian, if you're a bus driver, if you're a janitor or whatever. I don't care what your job is. The main purpose in your life, even on your job, is to be a witness and a testimony for Jesus. See? A lot of folk ain't willing to do that. They don't care nothing about being a witness for the Lord and all of that. Why? Because they're more intimidated by people. And see, this is the thing about people. They have allowed themselves to literally be uh, drawn into a lot of the stuff out here in the world all because you give attention to it. See, if the Bible says to you, love not the world, neither the things of the world, because all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, there should be nothing out there that you want. There should be nothing out there that affects you in such a way to where you lose your peace, you lose your joy, you lose your relationship with God, all because you're paying attention to what's going out there, going on out there in the broad way. Now, what did Jesus say about the broad way? He said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Destruction. And many there be which go in there at. You know why T.D. Jake says this stuff about 
homosexuals being acceptable and all of this stuff, and even those things that they're going to heaven. But you read uh, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, it tells you no homosexual is going to heaven. Right. Nobody practice fornication is going to heaven. No adulterer is going to heaven. Not even a liar is going to go to heaven according to the word of God. Right. See, you're not going to, you sin, sin in it, you die in that sin, you're going to hell, man. That's right. Because Jesus said, look, without holiness, no man shall see God. You cannot consider yourself, and nobody else can consider you to be holy if you sin it. Right. See? You can't be a sinner and be holy at the same time. You can't be faithful and be a sinner at the same time. And I'm talking about the faith of God. You can't have the God kind of faith and sin against God. It's the God kind of faith, and you only get the God kind of faith when you repent from your sin and you live in righteousness and holy before God. Amen. See, see the thing is, I mean, y'all get I me mean, lot. So many people, they do too much crap by looking at men instead of trusting in God. See, because I mean, ninety percent of the church put faith in man and not in God. That's right. See, look, if you have uh, one of them big name preachers preaching somewhere downtown or whatever, and we got Jesus over here at the house. And we let people know by putting it on Facebook, you know, doing a little thing and putting it on YouTube. Let everybody know Jesus is going to be over here, such and such and such a day, such and such a time. You know, and T.D. Jackson is going to be over yonder. Somebody like him is going to be over yonder at the stadium at the same time. See? There ain't going to be people lining up at my door trying to get to Jesus. There ain't going to be that. Because Jesus said that himself. He said, if one come to his name, he says, you're going to see him. He said, that, but if, I mean, he said, you're going to receive him. He said, but if I come to my name, he said, you ain't going to receive me. Mm -hmm. Look, to me, that is so evident today mm -hmm. because if people have received Jesus like they say they did when they got saved and stuff, you ain't going to have this kind of doggone Milky Way gospel that's being preached in the church. Right. Because a Milky Way gospel is a gospel that makes everybody happy. Nobody gets convicted. Nobody gets rebuked. Nobody gets chastised. But baby, we're going to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. See? And we're going to give you everything that you want, everything that you put in on that sheet that you sent, that you wanted uh, in a church. That's what we're going to give you. We're going to give you all of that and a little bit more, see, because and they ain't lying because you know what happens once they know they got you happy mm -hmm. with something, they're going to do everything and find everything they can keep doing to keep you happy. That's right. See, that's, right. that's what they're going to do. Jesus was never interested in keeping nobody happy. That's right. You ain't got one scripture that says he wanted you to be happy. Right. No, he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be holy. He wants you to be righteous. He wants you to be a person that seeks for God's kingdom and have totally surrendered your life and your will to God. Amen. See, that's all. That's all he's concerned about. See, because if he can, if we decide to allow him to do that, then the Holy Spirit who lives in us, Jesus can minister to us by his spirit and because the Holy Spirit is listening to what Jesus said because Jesus ain't going to remind you everything that I said. Right. So now that, that that the Holy Spirit is getting his his uh, his the direction from up from, from Jesus now he can give him to us. Mm -hmm. See, we don't get our direction from a man. Right. People don't going to break the neck trying to join a certain church because it's real popular and they got a whole lot of stuff going on in that church and all. Mm -hmm. See, and it's like I said before, a lot of them churches, you go in them doggone churches, you think you're blind because you can't see nothing. <laughs> it's so dark in them something. All you can see is a flashing light and you think that you're taking some LSD or something <laughs> when you get up in there. All them different colors and you walking around going like you crazy and all of that. See, that stuff is not have no benefit for you and your relationship with God. Right. None whatsoever. None has no benefit for you at all. So, so the thing is, is that 
Let me just read this scripture first over here in, in, in John chapter 8. And, I, and as I was telling you, these people said that they had a relationship with Jesus. And there were several, several times where Jesus, um, he told them in, in chapter, in verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in the light, there ain't nothing hidden from you. Right. God is not going to let you be surprised by various things that relate to scripture and relate to your relationship, re relate rather, to your walk with him and stuff. He's going to allow you to see everything. He's going to reveal to you everything, the good and the bad. Most folks don't want to see the bad or hear nothing about the bad. Mm -hmm. See, most people don't want to hear nothing about their sin. Mm -hmm. They don't want God telling them that they're sinning. When they're enjoying it, see? And the thing about it is, you know, deception is one of the biggest blind spots for most people. Mm -hmm. See, because deception can make you think something's the truth and it's not. Right. See? I mean, you know, really think about it. You somebody tell you something because you trust them. They tell you something, they say, oh, you're married, you know what I mean? Yes, so such and such and such and such and such and such. And man, you start getting all excited. You know, because the things that they're telling you about, I mean, it's something that's really going to make you feel good and all of this stuff. And they say, oh, yeah, it was up God and all that. So you run across somebody that had dealing with that same person. And they say, yeah, child, they told me that same stuff and I lost everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. And you talking about somebody who had like lips dripping with honey? They did. <laughs> they knew exactly what to tell me, and they knew exactly what little hot spots in my life that they could just touch, you know, and they got me. See, I'm going to tell you something. You may not believe it, but the devil studies your life. That's right. To see everything that you like. Not because he's going to bless you with what you like. He's going to use it okay. to manipulate you mm -hmm. and against you, yeah. He's going to use it that way. <laughs> and what's so troubling among folk who call themselves saved is they have not understood how serious a walk is with Jesus. Right. How serious it is when you say, I repent of my sin. Mm -hmm. See, at that moment, you know, just like I got my hands lifted up, I'm surrendering to the Lord. Amen. I'm surrendering to his will. Now, if I want to stay in the will of God and stay in right relationship with God, I cannot allow myself or my mind to wander out in what's going on in the broad way. Right. I got delivered out of that. Right. So if I got delivered out of the world and the broad way and stuff, why am I still got my ear to the wall of the world, hmm. trying to hear what they got going on in the world. If I did, if 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 if, if I love the world so much, and I thought it had so much good to offer in terms of my eternity, I may as well not got saved. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people make a confession of faith and salvation in Jesus, all because they don't. It's not conviction. It's that they got caught in some, some sin that somebody called them out on. Or they just kind of got to feeling bad about it. Mm -hmm. You know, that somebody called. Them. Because that's, oh yeah, I know I need to repent right now. I need, Lord, Lord, please forgive me of my sin and all this stuff. See, I don't tell people that you got to repent now, whatever. See, because I can remember going to churches and stuff when we were attending church. Where people would go down to the altar, you know, the preacher would, would, would call an altar call and tell people, come on down and get saved or whatever, see. But it's amazing they were getting saved when there wasn't even any truth preached. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get doggone, get doggone feeling uh, uh, uncomfortable just because it's a church, mm -hmm. just because of that name. Mm -hmm. And they got nothing to do with whether the Spirit of God is there or not. But they know what's supposed to be going on in that place, right. see. And as a result, they kind of get out gone quickly before they go in. And so when they 
when 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 something is said and and and, and, and something uh, reminds them of something that they've been doing that ain't quite right, they get to feeling guilty. There's a big difference in feeling guilty and doggone feeling convicted. Mm -hmm. See, That's right. real big difference in those two. That's right. See, because if you feel guilty, it's temporary. then you're you're not going to be guilty for long. Because mm -hmm. with guilt, you can doggone convince yourself over time that I got to, I got to get right. I need I, you know I I, I I I already got got that right, so I'm I'm good. See, but. When you get convicted and you repent, mm -hmm. see, now you're going to put Jesus in the whole question. Right. See, so now he's going to lead you and teach and guide you by the Holy Spirit. He's going to remind you of everything that he said. He's going to tell you and lead you according to the word of God by the spirit of God. See, he ain't going to be going out there and you can do a good deed to get over your guilt. No, you're going to have to give up your life to get over your sin. Right. See, that's what you're going to have to do. And so, and so when uh, when people go down to the altar because they got guilty and stuff, two days, three days later, you see them, they're doing the same thing they were doing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you, see, this is the thing that people who claim to be saved don't really get. You're different, totally different from a sinner. And I had some stuff out here I was gonna read to you. In a minute. But <clears throat> when I got delivered from my sin, my life changed. Right. Everything changed. And really, when you have that experience, it's not by happenstance that you have that experience. Mm -hmm. What God is showing you and telling you, hey, raise that light up just a little bit, please. What God is telling you, you know, when you do that, <clears throat> is that, you know, when you get when you get rid of your sin and stuff, when you repent of that stuff, then, you know, like I said earlier, I kind of lost my train of thought, but uh, but like I said earlier, when you get saved, you're not the same person. Right. And the thing is, is that I don't know why people don't look at the life of every person that followed Jesus, that he called to follow him when they were disciples and then after they became apostles on the day of Pentecost. But Jesus said they were apostles even while he was on the earth and stuff. But the thing was is that after the day of Pentecost, those guys were never the same. Mm -hmm. None of them. Because what did Jesus say about the Holy Ghost when it came upon you? You shall receive power from on high. Mm -hmm. So what do you think people are walking in that don't have that power from on high? They're being maneuvered by the devil every chance he gets, and they allow him to do that. Mm -hmm. They waver back and forth from one day to the next. There's never any stability in their lives in terms of walking in the spirit all day long, seven days a week. Right. They don't think, they don't have the same thoughts that unsaved people have. Why? Because now they belong to Jesus. Right. See? Because now they have accepted the fact that now I'm in Christ, then I've given him control of my mind because the Bible says that I can have the mind of Christ. Amen. I can think on things of above and not things on this earth. Right. See, and the one thing that you and I need to understand, whatever we choose to do, we choose to do it. That's right. We choose to do it. Nobody can make us do anything. See, when it comes to a life of a believer, nobody can make you do nothing. See, it's your choice because that's what God gave you. See, mm -hmm. but the thing is, is that if you don't understand what happened to you when you truly got saved or if you truly got saved or when you say you truly got saved, that your life ain't going to change. Right. See, because salvation is a two part thing. In the Romans chapter 10, it says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe. That's the most important part. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right. Because with the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness, salvation. unto salvation. But when you believe, you believe 
unto righteousness. See, you believe unto righteousness. All righteousness and anything doing, dealing with righteousness in terms of learning it, knowing it, and living it, found right here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be found in an extra book. It's not going to be found in one of them stupid, dumb translations. Mm -hmm. It's going to be found in the original text of the King James Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. See, because, see, somebody was asking me something about these uh, translations. See, when men make translations, it is not to expound or to enlarge the truth. Really, it's not. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to give you an understanding where you can understand it, even though it may be taking the scripture out of context. Because mm -hmm. I've seen too many scripture, uh, especially in the NIV, and then you read them in the King James, you got the whole translation, the right scripture in, in the King James, but in the NIV, you can't even find the scripture. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I was looking up a word. I can't think of the name of or what the word was, looking up the scripture rather. And so uh, I have this uh, search uh, engine that I, uh, that I use for scripture verses uh, called Bible Passage Lookup. And so I typed in the word and I didn't realize it was on an NIV translation. So when I typed it up in there, um, I didn't even see the word. It didn't even have the scripture for it. So I said, wait a minute. I said, something's wrong with this. So I said, oh man, it's on the NIV. So I clicked it and then uh, searched it in the King James. Then the scripture popped up just like that. <laughs> see? And yet, in the NIV, it wasn't even in there. Yeah. So if I'm studying something and I'm looking for, could be a key scripture to the understanding of the hearer, but it ain't in there. <laughs> See, it's not, I don't use not, I don't use none of them things, man. To me, it's almost like having fellowship with the devil when you go searching. Them. <laughs> See, because I ain't going to tell you the truth. Right. See? The thing that we need to understand and never ever forget as children of God and as believers is we shall know the truth and the truth, and the truth shall make us free. Mm -hmm. See, and, and the thing about it is, is that, let me just read this. I, I don't reference this. I, mean, I need to go on and read it before I be done forgot all about this. Oh, y'all thought he was going up to John. He ain't got there yet. See, <laughs> See you, you're sitting up there complaining. That's probably the first time you ever opened your Bible. <laughs> So don't be trying to make fun of me, Jack. Okay, so in verse, uh, and I was telling you like in verse 12, these same people that, that confessed later on that they believed in Jesus, the Bible says that, uh, he said, if you follow me in verse 12, he says, you shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now I'm gonna tell you something why people believe in some of these preachers, these real popular preachers or whatever, they're scared not to. Right. You're going to tell somebody, you know, I mean, I don't know, probably, but you're going to tell somebody, T.D. Jakes is a false pastor. You better not tell a black person that. It may happen to you what happened to people in Chicago. <laughs> they take you out. <laughs> See? Because I'm telling you, some people have got so stupid over this color stuff. You know, I mean, it's, it's literally pathetic, you know, because they think that they got some kind of special something with God because of that. See, you can tell that to another fool just like you and they'll go, oh yeah, yeah, because you know, they're political, politically correct people, they're social justice people and all of that. God don't care nothing about either one of them, right. period. Everything gonna be judged by the book, this book. See, you know, you probably have some fools out there not as stupid as they've got now. Uh, well, you need to take the, the Bible is racist. The Bible is great. Why is the Bible racist? Because it's got white pages. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. True. You know, that ain't, I mean, we laughing, but that ain't no stupid a lot of other stuff they got going on there. Yeah, we 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 need to we need to do something different. We we need to take all of that that stuff off of them white pages and stuff and put it on something else. Okay, what do you suggest? I don't know, but I'll come up with something. See? When people do stupid stuff, for the most part, they don't even have a doggone answer or solution for them. 
They're just talking because somebody else told them to talk. People believe stuff just because Jake said believe it, because Osteen said believe it and stuff. It ain't got no, it doesn't matter whether you got scripture to back it up or not. Mm -hmm. I ain't believing nothing anybody says, you know, and I don't care who they are. I don't care who, they could be Jesus' cousin or brother for that matter. Because he has some stupid relatives now that didn't believe in it, you know. So it don't matter. And people, and, 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 th and this is how this stuff works, man. People will receive you and treat you a certain way all because you treat somebody that they know or that they believe in because you treat them, you talk good about them, they're going to treat you right. Mm -hmm. All because of what you said about some jerk that they believe in. See, that's stupid. That's stupid because you've been led by the doctrines of men and not by the doctrine of Christ. So, so Jesus said, 13. Mm -hmm. He says, he says in verse 18, he says, uh, I am the one that bears witness of myself and the father that sent me bears witness of me. Then said they unto him, where is thy father? Now, how stupid is that? Where is thy father? Jesus answered, ye neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of the pastors, the preachers don't know this either. They don't know Jesus, and they don't know the Father. Because what was Jesus' evidence that he had a relationship with God, with the Father? He did the will. He did the Father's will. And every time you heard him say something, after he had done something, my Father gets the glory. I'm doing it in my father's name. My, what I see my father uh, uh, do, that's what I'm doing. What I hear my father say, that's what I'm saying. See, So the thing was is that the evidence was the fact, because he even said himself. He said, if you don't believe me, he said, believe in the works that I do and give my father the glory. He basically says that. See, So we, you know, we're not going to make it through this life without being like Jesus. Amen. We're not going to make it in this life pleasing God without being committed to God's will, to God's purposes, like the apostles. Right. See, there ain't nowhere I've been able to find in scripture where the apostles didn't do what God told them to do or didn't do what they see Jesus do or were told by Jesus to do. Right. See, what makes people who think that they are children of God any different? You know, the reason we got people so screwed up about their doctrines and all because they believe in men instead of believing in God. See, these men have made a name for themselves. <clears throat> and people don't care how they came about to be as popular as they are. Yeah. And you know how they did it? By lying, by deceiving people, and by appealing to people's flesh and not ministering truth so that their spirit might grow. See, they ain't doing that. Why do you think you got all these different denominations and stuff? Because of men. Mm -hmm. See, it's not God. Can nobody blame God for, because this is a big mess we got. Think about the mess we have when you've got all of these different doctrines, all these different denominations and stuff. Think about the mess you got. Because you got however many denominations you have, however many different doctrines you have, you got all that many different kinds of people and what they believe. Mm -hmm. See? So there's no way Ephesians 4 will ever be able to come fruition, come to fruition unless we just keep in mind that it's talking to the remnant. Mm -hmm. It's talking to that small group of people that truly believe God that truly worship the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in spirit and in truth, mm -hmm. see? So that's who he's, when God is talking about the church, those are the people he's talking about. Sure. He is not talking about these people that meet in these million dollar churches downtown, you know, and these hundred thousand dollar churches on the outskirts of town and stuff. He ain't talking about that, see? Because God says, look, 
He says, look, I don't dwell in buildings. Mm -hmm. He said, I do not dwell in buildings. See? That's right. Even when the man, even when God manifests his presence in a place, once he's done, he's gone. Right. Ain't that what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. When Jesus healed a blind man, he left it. Mm -hmm. When Jesus healed, I think that well, one of the uh, the uh, 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 the paralytics or whatever, he healed him and he left. Mm -hmm. See, it wasn't important that they, you know, give him glory and give him praise. Because he didn't want that. He only wanted that for the Father. Yeah. See? And so, and the, and the whole thing about that was because of the fact that he knew the Father, he was exposing a whole lot of people who were liars, just like these folks. He said, you don't know the Father. He says, you neither know me nor the Father, verse 8, 19. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father. Verse 21. Now, if they keep trying to say that they God is their father and stuff, then they ought to be having a relationship with Jesus. Right. And they ought to really know who he is. So in verse 21 says, I go my way, and you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. See? So they didn't, they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. And see, a lot of people today, right now, are saying the same thing that they say, that they know God, he is their father, and Jesus said the same thing to him, if you knew my father, you would know me. Mm -hmm. See, people don't know God. A lot of people, most people, I, I go out on a limb and say that, most people really don't know who God is mm -hmm. because they never take time to read the word of God, and you cannot understand God anyway if you don't have a relationship with him. Right. If you've never repented of your sin, you don't have a relationship with God right. at all. So the thing is, is that, is that Jesus said, you don't know me. So in verse uh, 23, he says, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. How did Jesus know they were of the world? First of all, because he knew they didn't have no relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you are of the world. Sure. You're not just in it. You are of the world. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Ain't that what, what uh, John said that's out there? Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to do. See? And that's what these preachers are doing. Jake's and all these folks that I'm talking about and stuff. You know, I mean, I, th I looked at three different... Uh, uh, videos and not one of them said anything substantive in regard to the word of God that would help people. You know, all they did was just say words that I mean just flamed their flesh. On T.D. Jakes when uh, that guy does it, who, who is he? My dear guy, whatever. He said he gave him a million dollars. Everybody went crazy. See? And I guarantee you, say he said somebody you know, oh, somebody gave their life to the Lord. They would. <laughs> but all them people, doggone, had to get. I mean, they were beside themselves because this guy gave a million dollars. But yet he still also produces ungodly movies, mm -hmm. ungodly programs. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're holding him up in your church as somebody that is a man of God and all of this stuff and mm -hmm. special, you know. When I ain't seen, I mean, well, I don't look at this crowd, you know, because when it first came out, everybody said, oh, you got to see my deal. Oh, you got to see my deal. I didn't need to see my deal for about 30 seconds, and that was enough. <laughs> see, look, man, when we're children of God, we have to be careful what we put before our eyes. Right. We have to be careful how we hear. Right. That's what the Bible says and stuff. And uh, what's that guy's name? Tyler, Tyler Perry and stuff. You know, and, and, and I mean, an airline, and he's up there on the dock. Now, this is the guy. See, this is what happens when you start having relationships outside of what who God told you to. See, because when you start getting relationships, especially with these famous perverts in Hollywood and stuff, then you're going to have to do something, you know, to please them in order to maintain that relationship. Right. Because you like being out there in the spotlight with all the actors and all the movie stars and all of this stuff. 
Jesus was never doggone. I, get, I guarantee you, the closest Jesus came to those kind of people, you know, was the uh, the tax collector. Uh, Matthew. No. Uh, it was a little dude that was up in his tree. Okay. Zacchaeus. See, so went to his house or whatever. But the thing about it is, after Jesus went to Zacchaeus' house, what happened there? Zacchaeus. You know, got convicted because of the preaching of the gospel in the presence of the Lord. And what did he do? People that he had cheated them, man, he gave them. He gave all the money back to them, plus some. Mm -hmm. See? And Jesus didn't tell him to do that. Is there anywhere in scripture where Jesus said, Oh, you need, you know, now since I'm here, you need to go. No. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what happened? He got convicted in his heart. And and being in the presence of Jesus, and he saw how Jesus ministered good to people right and so he said look and g and hearing jesus preach the word he knew that he had wrong people mm -hmm. and and the only way he knew how to correct it was to repay him for what he had stolen mm -hmm. see so his heart was changed and after jesus ministered that or that happened in that house because what did he say he says today salvation has come to this house that's right Amen. Salvation, see. I didn't hear nobody jumping up and running around the church at 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 uh, at, 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 at TDJ church, you know, saying that. They were running around, oh million dollars, million dollars. They don't care nothing about the life that the guy is leading. All they're concerned about, oh, he gave a thousand dollars. And it was amazing the number of people who were trying a million, I'm sorry, and it was amazing the people that were coming forward, you know. After this happened and all that, defend that. Oh, well, you know, he was just trying to give back and all that. No, that client should have been on his face repenting, see? But he was in the wrong church for that to happen. Because right. it wasn't going to happen in that church. Right. They already deemed him a man of God all because of his status mm -hmm. and his monetary value. Mm -hmm. That's it. See? That's it. That was it. Had yeah. nothing to do with his relationship with God. And he was standing up there, you know, trying to speak in tongues and all of this stuff or whatever. You know, man, the devil is a counterfeit. That's right. You know, the devil is a counterfeit. See? And so the thing is that, you know, the devil can dog on speak in tongues better than I can. And I be speak in tongues every day. Mm -hmm. So it ain't got nothing to do with it. But you do not take something that is in the world that is corrupt and of the devil. Because you know what happens? Now that Tyler Perry came into his church and now he done gave that million dollars or whatever and T.D. Jakes has given him his blessings and all of this and now that he's a friend of T.D. Jakes, I don't care what that dude does. Those people in that church think it's okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. And guess what? There are going to be people who do things in their own life that are very sinful all because T.D. Jakes said it was okay. Mm -hmm. Simply by inviting that guy in and everything that he represents. See, nothing he represents of God, nothing. And not only that, you know how the old saying goes, you know, you identify by the company that you keep. Right. See, why do you think God tells us to come out from among them and be separate? See, a true child of God has nothing in common with that guy. Right. Nothing. And not only that, they ain't going to find themselves hanging around that guy either. Right. Period. See. But see, T.D. Jakes don't find nothing wrong with that. I mean, he got all kinds of friends in Hollywood. And the thing about it is, there's a guy that is that I believe is truly born again, that is that 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 that's a an actor, and he won't take certain roles. And is uh, I'm trying to think of his name now. Uh, -uh it started with a C. I, I, I was I had it on my mind. Uh, on my tongue right before I was getting ready to say it. It started with a C. I can't think of his name. He played in that movie, uh, The uh, Something of Christ. The Passion. Jim Caviezel. That's what I said. That's him. What'd you say? Caviezel. Okay, you over there, you like, you like you scared so much you got a piece of cheese in your mouth because you weren't talking very loud. <laughs> but Jim Caviezel, see? But I ain't seen nowhere where they're inviting him in the church. They didn't call... Because I'm telling you, he ain't going to be pussy foot around when he comes to the work, at least from what I've seen of his testimony and stuff. But see, those kind of people are not going to be in those kind of churches, see, right. to where they can really give a real testimony 
you ain't gonna find them in there. You know, those kind of churches are only looking for, you know, famous people, people with money, people with name recognition, mm -hmm. you know, people who are prestigious and all of that. That's all you're gonna see in those churches and stuff. See? And the reason I know that is because you never ever hear about any of those people getting I mean, look at Oprah Winfrey, for example. She thinks she's a god unto her own self, and she thinks she's a god. But see, all of these people, they don't realize that God has the last say so about your destination or your eternity, and it's going to be based on how you live, if you live for him or not. And most people in Hollywood, they hate God. See, they don't want, they don't want nothing to do with God, and they want to shut down all the churches. See, all because they hate God. But yeah, you're going to have this kind of trash coming into your church, you know, all because they got a famous name. Oh, forgot one thing. And it makes it even better because he's black. See, make excuses for those people. All because they're black. All because they're this. All because they're that and stuff. And that kind of mess will get you in hell real quick, see. Because, see, the thing is, is that you don't preach against that stuff. You appease that kind of stuff. Oh, well, look at what you can become. You can become this. Oh, well, you know, I grew up and we had an outhouse and all that. And I could be talking about myself on that. Oh, but we had an outhouse and all of this stuff. And we were real, real poor. And now look at me. What did Jesus say? I said that before this scripture a while ago. What does it profit a man? No, where you at? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul. Huh? It don't matter what, how, how much money you got. Jesus said, what profit is in it if you can gain everything in the world, but you lose your soul? You know why? Because everything in the world gonna pass away. But your soul ain't. See, your soul is gonna be either in torment of singing, of sitting around and of jumping around the throne of God, worshiping and praising him. Mm -hmm. See, And I'd much rather be worshiping and praising God than, than to spend eternity in hell. Hell is real. Hell is real. And see, these people don't believe that. They do not believe that God's going to send somebody to hell. Mm -hmm. I can promise you and you never know what these guys think about hell because they never preach on it. And when they are interviewed, they're never asked about it. You know why? Because they're not going to be asked about it. They're not going to go on any doggone program where the host is somebody that's full of God and full of the Holy Ghost. They ain't going to go on those programs. They're not. You see them go on programs, you know, where people are just like them and, and all of them and stuff. You know, I mean, when I was playing triple A ball in the minor leagues, uh, Hank Aaron happened to be at the same, staying at the motel, making a pierce or something, where we were living and all. You know, and I talked to him and, and shook his hand and, and, and all of this stuff, you know, because I respected him, you know, as a ball player, but also as a person. But I wasn't in awe of him. You know, the way I'm going to treat him like he's a god or something. Yeah. Mm -mm. I wasn't in awe of him at all. Because to me, he was just another man. You know, successful and all of that, yes. But, you know, when you get to heaven, excuse me, when you get to judgment on judgment day, one question that ain't going to be asked is this. Okay, so how much money did you contribute to the kingdom? Right. That ain't going to be in there. That ain't going to have nothing to do with, what you, with, with, with whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do at all with that. See? Jesus is going to want to know, okay, what did you do? To further the kingdom. What did you do to glorify my name? What did you do in ministering truth and leading people to have a relationship with me? Personally, what did you do? And all of that. See? Because see, the thing is, he says, I understand that you will stay, you stayed on the straight and the narrow. In and out to my rest, I good and faithful servant. And then somebody here comes somebody that was claiming the same thing you were claiming in their relationship with Jesus. And they get up to him and they see him face to face and you start telling him about all of this stuff that you've done. All of these things that you've done in his name. 
And he look at you and he say, depart from me. I never knew you. Now, I'm going to make the same point that I made a couple of weeks ago. Now, you're standing before Jesus. You've attended church your whole life. You're about 100 years old now. And you've been attending church since you was about, I mean, for 80 years, 90 years. See? But you never, ever repented of your sins. Mm. Never. And the older you got, the harder it became for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Because, you know, you become old and crabby now and somebody trying to tell you that you're not saved and they're like 25 years old and they're telling you because they love you and it ain't got nothing to do with their age, but you're looking at them like, how can you tell me what to do? You're a whippersnapper. You ain't but 25 years old. I'm, I've been around the block <coughs> more times than you'll ever go around the block, mm -hmm. see? And then the kids say, yeah, but you may go around the block he said, but you don't have one doggone chance of salvation. That's right. And he said, this is it. He said, because you may drop dead tomorrow. I'm not trying to be ugly, sir. I know you're about 100. But the Bible says today's the day of salvation. See? And, that's, and it's hard for people that get older because they have become so set in their ways. And in their mind, can't nobody tell them nothing because I've been going to church. And all they knew was that as long as I go to church, I'm going to be okay with God. You know the chapter and verse for that, Samuel? I don't know one. There ain't one, is it? Show sure ain't. So the thing is, is that I got to do it the way God says. These guys deceiving people, lying to people, get you all this money that you can get. What did God say to you? God said that, oh, you got to stay in that shack or whatever. God ain't never said none of that kind of stuff. But God never told you to live in a doggone penthouse either. He didn't say that was necessary for you to be saved. He didn't say that was necessary for you to be faithful to him either. See? Because he says, when you're faithful to me, I will supply all your need. Now, Mary and I can testify to that big time. Because there were times in our lives when we would look at the checkbook and look at the bills that we had to pay, and it didn't line up. No, we didn't have more money than bills. No, we had more bills than money. <laughs> but God met the need every single time. Amen. I can't remember how many times we would look at each other and go, how did that happen? See? See, that's the thing about a person that's truly in love with the Lord. You're going to trust him no matter what. You understand. See, I understood when I first got saved that there were going to be hard times or whatever because Jesus said there were going to be. See, because that's the thing. And the sad thing about this is what I'm about to say is this. It's the sad thing like when you really get saved, when you first get saved, man, you hungry for the Lord. You don't care what anybody tells you in that book. You're going to believe. It. Right. See, you're going to believe. It. You're not going to even waver about it. You're not going to even think about whether God can do something or not. If somebody says, showed you in the Bible what God, what the Bible says, you know, God says that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. And if you have faith and believe and pray that prayer of faith and ask Jesus to heal you, he'll heal you. That happened to me. Somebody said, yeah, man, you know, if you believe that, uh, you know, you can be filled with the spirit, don't you? What is that? Oh, you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Here, let me show you over here in Acts. See, as long as the person showed me in scripture about something that they were telling me, and I saw it for my own self with my own eyeballs. I had no problem believing it. See, because I, you know, I don't want to be tricked, and I don't want to trick nobody. That's why I'm so adamant about the truth and the truth only. And, and most of the time, you know, I want to be able to back it up with scripture and stuff. And the thing about it, if I don't give the scripture, then you need to write down what I said and then go back and look it up. You know, in scripture. Because there are times, you know, when the Holy Spirit gives you stuff, you don't get the scripture because he's telling you stuff so fast that you got to try to get it all out. And so, and so you take notes and stuff, see? And that's one thing that helped us too. Mary and I took notes every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Monday, every Tuesday, Thursday, and, and even on, uh, yeah, even Tuesday and Thursday. So every time that we were hearing God's word, whether it was being preached to us or whether it was being taught to us, 
man, we wrote stuff down. Because, see, this is the beauty about the Holy Spirit. If you really want to know something, as you are hearing it, he'll reveal it to you. See, that's only if you want to know. Be see, because if you don't, if you don't want to know, you're wasting your time. Right. Because you know, you know, he's wasting his time, brother, because he can be talking to you all day long. But if you don't want it, you ain't gonna hear. That's why people can block stuff out when they're in a place like this, mm -hmm. if they really want to. They can block it out. You can preach the word like I'm doing right now and read the scripture, whatever. But if I don't hit a nerve somewhere along the way, I got tuned out <laughs> about five minutes into the message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's almost an hour. it's over an hour now. So you know they've been tuned out for a while. Mm -hmm. And and you know what happens when people tune out in church? They become offended. Mm -hmm. And instead of them sitting there, you know, repenting or or, or, or or just meditating on what God says, trying to get a better understanding for themselves, because they know they want that, they need that understanding, mm -hmm. but they don't want it. Mm -hmm. See, they don't want it that way. And so what they do, they'll sit up in church, and now instead of them having the peace of God, they start stupid. How in the world can he say stuff like that? How in the world can he be preaching that? How in the world can he be offending me like that and stuff? And so everything becomes about you and your sin. Mm -hmm. See, that's the only reason you're mad, because you got busted by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. See, and people want to always throw bricks at the preacher when you know when any preacher you ain't worth a dime. A penny <laughs> if you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because everything that you're saying, you know, that is not of the Holy Spirit and you're calling it the Holy Spirit, that's a lie. And you're lying to people and you're deceiving people. And those people, there's going to be so many people who got the blood of other people on their hands because they would not tell them the truth. I mean, I mean, hell's going to be full of blood, man. But it's still going to be burning. Because people fail to do what God told them to do. There's no way that I can call myself a man called by God if I don't love the people that I am ministering to enough to tell them the whole truth. Right. See, see, a lot of y'all sitting in church where the preacher ain't going to tell you the truth. The preacher going to treat you, if you're somebody that has some kind of prestige or some kind of money in it, uh, that's got big money in the church or uh, stuff like that, they're going to treat you different than they treat everybody else. And if you are truly a child of God and you truly love God and you love your family and God, regardless of their status in life or whatever, you ain't going to let that dude do that to you. Right. You're going to call that sucker out on that. See? And that's what a lot of people won't do. They think the preacher is so special that he can't do nothing wrong. Oh, well, you know, because of him, you know, he was able to raise funds for us to have a student activity bill. See? He was able to have us to, to raise the money for us to build. How many doggone people have he has he raised, you know, into a newness of life and a new relationship by preaching the gospel of Jesus? You don't hear nothing about that. Mm -mm. Absolutely nothing. You know, like these people, when they go around and when they come, they do it, I guess, at the end of a quarter or something. They'll send around this little doggone questionnaire to the preachers and the, and the uh, board of the church and all, you know, and they have these questions like, okay, so... How many people do y'all have now? How much people did y'all grow, you know, in the last quarter? What were the tithes? What was the offer? What was the benevolence? What was this and all of that stuff, you know? They don't ask you one time how many people that you know for a fact gave their life to Jesus. See? And even if they had that question on it, they were going to tell a lie. Because when they know that these folks doing these surveys in their organizations like the Assemblies of God or Church of God and even the Southern Baptists or whatever, you know, when they ask certain questions, those folks know the answer that they're looking for. And they're going to give them that answer whether it's true or not. And so, so your whole life is being lived as a lie all because you didn't have enough, enough guts to challenge the child of the devil. Who is the pastor? Let's just run over to verse eight, uh, uh, verse forty-four, in chapter eight of John. It says, "Ye of your father, the devil, and the lust of your." Well, let me just go up a couple of uh, verses. Verse forty-two: If God, and this is Jesus speaking, 
If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Now, what I want you to understand about this is about that is this. All of those people I mentioned earlier, T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, some guy named Carla Lentz. Lentz, and some of these other folks and stuff. You know, all of those people are the devil. What do you mean, preacher of the devil? Man, I heard him say nothing about truth when I when I listen to them talk. When you tell somebody that that you are evolving, you, that you have evolved into accepting homosexuality, you know, and continuing to evolve in that, and that there are other more than one way to Jesus. Did did Jesus ever say that? Mm -hmm. well, Jesus said totally opposite to what they said. Homosexuals going to burn in hell like everybody else. And God has already given us a little bit of inkling of what it's going to be like when he burned up Sodom and Gomorrah for their sinfulness, you know, and, and their homosexual perversions and stuff. See, because what that does, homosexuality does, it mocks the creation of God. It is saying to God, you got it wrong. You created me to be something that I'm not. I am not a man. I'm a woman. I am not a woman. I'm a man and stuff. And you messed me up. So now, you know, I, I, I got to fix this. So what they're saying to God is, I'm God. I'm the one that makes the choices and stuff. You made a mistake. And I'm going to correct your mistake. See, because I hate you because of the fact that you made a mistake with my life and made me somebody that I'm not. See, they're mad at it. They are mad at God, and yet they're saying that God didn't have a clue about what he was doing. See, ain't there something when people want to keep their sin and live and walk in their sin and stuff? The person that's wrong is God and not them. See, that's the kind of stinking thinking and demonic possession that we have in our country. That's right. The Bible says in second in our, in, our, in First Timothy chapter four. He said, in the last day, some would depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, you can say you don't believe in devils all you want to, but the Bible says that they are, they are real. Devils were cast out of people in Jesus' day. And there's nowhere in the Bible that it says that's passed away. Right. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but what? My word shall never pass away. See? Everything it says in this book, it still is. See, everything from demonic possession, you know, to uh, to people being being bound in their sin to the point to where they go blind. See, all that stuff is still real. And I will tell you what else is real. The wages of sin is death. And the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, if that is true, which it is, if you listen to me right now, and if you've never repented of your sin, you need to repent of your sin because you're a sinner. Right. And it, it, being a sinner, is uh, uh, being not a sinner, or being saved is not based on the fact that you are a good person. Right. It's not based on the fact that you do all kind of services out here in the community. We got churches that are service churches and not churches that are surrendered to the will and to the purpose of God and to the teachings of the doctrines of Jesus Christ. But all you got to do is serve. Serve. And God is going to be pleased with you. Part of your salvation when you come to Jesus is serving people. Right. Jesus said, I am a servant. Right. That's what he said about himself. So we don't have churches that just have services. We don't have churches that are just entertainment places. 
See, every time I think about, about one of these stupid churches that got the, all of these entertaining stuff going on in them, when you go in them, as I said earlier, you need a doggone, uh, you need a big doggone spotlight when you go in there because everything is so dark. Mm -hmm. And you got a bunch of doggone crazy people jumping around and, 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 and shouting crazy and jumping around like they're a pogo stick or something. Mm -hmm. But instead, they ought to be bowing and worshiping the Lord. See? And just because you got music in the church don't mean that it's of God. Right. See, nothing necessarily going on in the church is of God or has to be of God. See, because the thing about it, when Jesus entered the temple, there was nothing about doggone, oh, yeah, turn on the strobe, like get all that stuff ready before I get there. Ooh, because I really want to doggone just enter in when I get there and stuff. Yeah, enter into the den of the devil is what, you, what you're doing, see. Churches are not the church that God talks about. He's talking about his people. It is a place here yeah, where people gather. And if the people in the building were truly the church of God, ain't none of that crap going to be going on up in there. Right. You ain't gonna have a dog on pool table every six feet. You ain't gonna have a dog on bowling alley off to the side over there. Right. You're not gonna have a dog on hitting cages over on this side and stuff like that. So you can appeal to all mamas and daddies whose kids play sports. See, there's a price to pay, and it's a damnable price to pay for disobedience to God. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And most of you don't know what it is to walk in the spirit because your pastor is a child of the devil. See, because in this scripture that I just read, and I'll be closing a little bit. In this scripture that I just read, when Jesus says, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Now, when a preacher is not preaching the word of God, when the preacher is not having a conviction about truth and about being led by the Holy Spirit, and if he's not doing that, he's a child of the devil. Yeah. Why? Because truth is not important to them. Only making you feel good about your sin and about your flesh. That's all that matters. Because Jesus says that when the devil speaks, because Jesus said, now you're going to do just like your daddy. So if you're representing, if you're a child of, of the devil, he said you're going to speak a lie. He says you're going to speak a lie. Why? Because there ain't no truth in him. No truth is what Jesus said. So if you have no truth living inside of you, how can you preach truth? How can you even have the truth revealed to you and expounded on through the Holy Spirit if you don't believe in truth? Sure. See, these guys cannot preach the truth. That's right. They are children of the devil. See, and you know why it is so easy for them to preach truth? I mean, to not preach truth rather is because they know that's what the people want. Right. The people don't want truth. The people are no different today than they were in the days of Jeremiah. Right. They say, I mean, and even in the days of Samuel, they said, man, look, we, 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 we want us a king. We want somebody leading us and protecting us just like other nations. See, other nations. Or you can say other men. We want us a preacher that's going to fill this church up with people. We want to grow, see? And they want to grow at any cost. And for many of these guys, it's costing them their eternal life, and they don't know it. And it's not that they don't really know it. They don't really care because they don't think anything is going to happen to them. Go, hey, look, I'm Joe Lowstein, man. I'm Kenny Copeland and stuff. And they think they can just say stuff and believe it themselves and preach it as truth and give it and shell it out to the people as the gospel. Right. See, that's what they, they are so full of themselves. 
Men being lovers of pleasures, lovers of self more than lovers of God. See, because if they were of God, then they would preach the truth. In Isaiah 59, he says, three, it says, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Isaiah, and in verse four, none calleth for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. I'm talking about the pastor. Keep this in mind. I'm talking about preachers right now. They trust in vanity and they speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. And they bend their tongues, and this is Jeremiah 9, 3, and they bend their tongues like their bow for lies. But they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth. For they proceed forth from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith the Lord. Now, if a person don't know the Lord, man, how can they tell you anything about it? Right. When a person really knows the Lord, just listen to them talk about it. Just listen to how, how in depth they talk about their love for him, their faithfulness to him, their trust in him, see? Their unwavering love for the Lord and stuff. I mean, you ain't got to ask them nothing. You're going to sit back and you're going to say to yourself, man, I shouldn't ask them that. <laughs> oh, man, I shouldn't ask them that. See, let me just continue with it. In verse 5, it says, And they will deceive everyone, his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They ain't witnessing nobody. Mm -hmm. They ain't telling nobody about Jesus because how can you tell somebody about Jesus and how can you warn somebody about their sin when people that you have relationships with, close relationships with, are sinners? Huh? You can't do that. Right. Because now what you're telling everybody in, see, because this is the thing about being a pastor. You not only, and I'm, I'm talking about myself, because I'll just use myself as an example. Okay, so if I'm preaching the word of God, then what does the Bible say? I need to live the word of God. Right. See, because people need to see that you are somebody that they can trust because you tell them the truth. Right. And not only that, you live what you say. See, so we can trust you, but oh, do do down there and and and, and the pops out? Uh uh, uh uh. I'm not trusting anybody like that. I mean, there was years ago when I was a young believer in the Lord. I got deceived by some of them guys and stuff. Out. But when you go back and really listen to what they said and what they preached, there was never any meat of the word to nothing that they were saying. It was all appealing to the flesh. And what does the Bible say about my flesh? Paul says, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Right. In verse uh, 4, in the first in first John chapter 2, he said, the Bible says, I know him. Uh, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Can you imagine a person that tells a lie? The Bible says ain't no truth in him, none. So what does that tell you about the power of being a liar and the power of a lie? It wipes away any kind of goodness of God that you ever had. Right. See, ain't no truth in you. So you're all liars. So if you are a liar, that means that for sure, if a person knows scripture and understands scripture and not afraid to interpret scripture, they look at you, oh, child of the devil, ain't having nothing to do with him, see? And we need to understand, we have to separate ourselves from people who we openly know practice sin, call themselves a child of God. We know they can't be both. See, and the way that you know whether a person is one or the other is by how they live. Right. How they live. See, a person that truly is of God, they're going to be excited about it. 
I'm telling you, they're going to be excited about it. They can't wait to tell other people about it. They can't wait to be a witness and a testimony by how they live. They can't wait to repent when they miss the mark. See, they don't wait a week later and say, well, you know, I should have repented then. No, but I'm dead. No, Lord, see. I don't want to chance that. I'm not chancing that, man. I, and I don't do that to stay out of hell. I do it because God commanded I do that and because I love him and I want to spend eternity with him. And if I miss the mark and I need to repent immediately, then I need to do it. Let me ask you this question. What's the difference in repenting immediately as opposed to waiting until later? <laughs> you could die if you don't. Exactly. If the Bible says that tomorrow is promised to uh, today is the day of salvation, and to that tomorrow is promised to nobody, and not only tomorrow, you I mean I've seen people drop dead before tomorrow got here. See? People don't and I don't understand how people love playing with their life, with their eternal life. They like playing with it. Nobody's getting to heaven any other way other than the way God commanded in this book. Your life must be lived according to this book and not according to your church doctrine, not according to man's doctrine, not according to traditions, not according to your denomination or none of that. See, all of those things have totally screwed up people who consider, who, who, uh, consider themselves to be a part of the body of Christ. See, because if I belong to this church, I, I, I know I'm saved. If I'm in this denomination, I'm doing what they tell me to do based on their doctrine, I know I'm saved. And that's the way everybody feels about their denomination and their church and their doctrine and not only that about their preacher. You can't tell me my preacher ain't, ain't saved. Read your Bible and look and listen at what he's telling you. Look at the kind of people that they're hanging around with. See, do you see them having anybody like uh, that cleans the doggone church over at their house? No. Do you hear, see the banker pulling up down there? Yeah. That banker that, that's not going to marry with three different other women as well, pulling up to the house. Oh, yeah. See? And then you try to impress people with all your possessions. Now, I think Jake's got about 12 or 13 calls. Now, who needs that many calls for two people? See, if anything, you ought to be doggone donate them doggone calls to people in this church that need them. That's right. See? Because you let somebody in church, I don't care how poor they are, that don't tie. Everybody don't know about it. But it's a shame when people got knee all the way. You know, they just try to trick everybody, whatever, take advantage of everybody, and all of that. See? You know, and all these guys talking about, oh, I'm a faith healer. Uh, here, I'm a faith healer. Okay, then, well, why don't you go over there, in, over there in Africa, don't take not one dollar uh, from anybody. And there's a village over there with a whole bunch of just sick people and crippled people. And if God called you to heal them, he called you as a healer, then go over there. They don't go over there to them places. See, they want all of this cred and all of this stuff, but they don't do nothing for the kingdom of God. And a bunch of y'all better wake up and stop following them fools. See, because you're going to end up just like them. You know, you're going to end up next to them screaming in hell because you didn't like the preacher that was telling you that you needed to repent. See, you know, people don't like a person, a pastor that's straightforward, unashamed, uh, just to simply tell people the, the truth about stuff. See, I mean, I wouldn't call to tell you lies. I wouldn't call to make you feel good about your flesh. And I ain't going to ever do that. See, you know, I'm going to love you because if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be telling you the truth. But a lot of y'all drying up and died in them churches y'all in. And like I said last week, I ain't telling you to come to church here because most of you could stay, couldn't survive it anyway. Be too much truth for you. See? So the thing is, is that that these guys, Jake's, what's that boy's name? Carl Lentz. Who? Carl Lentz and but, but, but Osteen and all of them saying that you got sinners that are going to make it into heaven. Mm, mm, mm. What a shame. I'm going to just end it with that. Because the more I think about them guys, I tell you, the more I feel like I need to go to the bathroom and stick my head over the commode. I mean, I'm sick to my stomach about people like that. I mean, really. 
They got tons and tons of people going to hell because of a false doctrine that they preach. You know, and the thing about it is, is that a lot of y'all, you know, you know, even some of you listen to me right now, you know that your life is not what it should be in Jesus. You have listened to, to these, these prosperity preachers, because see, I've seen some of y'all post stuff on Facebook talking about, well, yeah, you know, there's a picture of a whole bunch of money. Oh, just click like, you know, and tomorrow you're going to get all your blessings. How come I ain't never seen none of y'all doggone posting about the tomorrow blessings that you got? <laughs> huh? I ain't seen none of them. Oh, yeah, I mean, I did this and the Lord gave me that. See, that ought to tell you right there. You know, it's the same principle that applies to a prophecy. You can tell if a prophecy was of God or not if it comes to pass. If it don't come to pass, you know it was a lie. And I've seen a lot of these doggone folk running around here talking about, ooh, I'm a prophetess, I'm a prophetess, I'm a prophet this and I'm a prophet that and all of that. See, most of y'all, you're so, you're so easy. I mean, the devil don't have to do much, doggone dog, just to deceive you, see, because you're so embedded in man's doctrine, man's thing. Let me get out of here. And Lord willing, we will see you all next time. Hallelujah. God bless you all.